Bro, I'm so hyped to watching uh, this game because I'll go up and I'll fight like a top level player. I'll do really well, right? Or like them, and then fight like random. That's like really that's bad, quote unquote, and just get like demolished by them. Dude, that's the that's the <laughs> bad player mix up. I, when I play people that don't play the game competitively, like, why would you ever do that? That's such a horrible option, and then it works. Yeah, bro, it, it always happens to me. Bro, it's part of the learning the game. Uh, dude, Underdog's C4 placement has been so clutch today. I've seen him, him and a crew hit a lot more C4s than normal. Yeah. yeah it's, it's people think, forget about him. Um, definitely from fighting both crew and Underdog, they're so good at just putting it in a spot where it's like, I need to be there at some point in this matchup if I want to push my advantage, get out of disadvantage or whatever. They put it on like a platform or just a certain of the stage and then it's like well i know i'm gonna have to be there later so i'm gonna have to deal with that or bait it out at some point oh yeah yo that oh my is god so annoying well it's just the thing about nikita oh my god Dude. i'm really good at avoiding it like the entire time uh i fought crew i only got killed with it like once or twice in our uh three match um set like i only got I never got hit with like uh, up smash from ledge or anything like that. Like the sn getting around snakes options is doable if you're a good character. Oh, absolutely. But it's just definitely like super difficult because <laughs> you got to be like so precise with your hit boxes because if you mess up, you're blowing up, you're getting all that damage. Uh huh. God, this music is loud. I don't know about you. This is very loud. Are you in amateurs or are you in uh, actual bracket? Hey, you're fighting him. Go over there. Oh. It's all good, man. We can talk about it later when we're playing friendlies. All right. So definitely, I think um, in this matchup, Fox's dash attack is probably one of his better um, options, right? Mm -hmm. But the only issue I have with that is uh, when Snake pulls grenade, if he does like a, a grenade pull with the grenade behind him, he's going to blow up, and then uh, Fox loses because he's trading, right? And yeah. Fox is super light. Yeah, but I do think that with uh, Snake, his disadvantage is awful because his up B, like if he up B's high, he's going to get up there. If he up these from the side, he's going to get back aired like we just saw there. Uh -huh. uh, if he goes for like any type of grenade mix-ups, he's probably going to get grabbed or uh, like reflector. Or reflector? Reflector. Reflector. <laughs> that sounds so stupid. <laughs> it's going to get reflected. He's going to get bodied, right? Yeah. But then in advantage state, Snake is just going to bop him to death. Well, like and I, I really think the reason why Potter wins this matchup, especially specifically versus Underdog, so consistently, is he just doesn't respect Snake at all. Yeah. He's like, I know I'm gonna win. I'm just gonna go in. Yeah, I do think that that um, Potter has a very respectable punish game in this game. Um, yeah, and he just play, he punishes you for being stupid. And you know, one of the uh, it's funny. Both floats and me agree that like Dan plays so good, but man, he plays just so stupid sometimes. <laughs> and like Potter will 100% call that out. Yeah. So here's the bad disadvantage I was talking about. He lands to ledge, which is like really smart. I think um, being like retreating to ledge is such an underutilized thing for characters who can just. Uh, how do I explain it? Like characters that oh aren't God. bad at getting off a of ledge should really like do that more. Like Plank can go for that. I mean, I don't think Snake is exactly too good at getting off a of ledge, but I do think that um, since he has so much air time, he can abuse the the more invincibility for being in the air longer. Uh huh. Well, I mean, I I'm, I mean, I, I doubt Underdog knows about it because I don't I didn't even know about it before <laughs> today. Um, they they said. Or they talked about it in the uh, direct before the game came out. Wow. You, do you know that uh, move stale on shield? Stale on shield? Yeah, if you hit uh, move on shield, it stales. Interesting. I did not actually. And then um, when you short hop, moves do less damage. Really? Yeah. That I didn't know. Gosh, hit me with all the facts today. But again, 
It's just like Potter's pushing his disadvantage, like putting, uh, sorry, pushing his advantage versus Snake. And I feel like Underdog's just having a hard time dealing with it. Because the one thing everyone says about Snake is he's really good, but man, his disadvantage is bad. Oh, yeah, for sure. Something uh, I was definitely punishing on Crew uh, when I was playing him against him with Link was uh, every time he had to land, I would just up B. And it would get me a free kill because even if he B reverses, uh, the sword's so long that it just like pulls yeah. him in. And, you know, same thing with Fox. Like, yeah, he can't do the, the janky up B and just pull him in and kill him at like 40 or whatever, but his up air hitbox is so small that, well, like, you know, small, quote unquote, uh, that he can just dodge the grenades because the grenades are pulled off to the side. Uh -huh. So he can just keep abusing him like that. Like you saw the grenade was right in front of him and he still got the kill because it didn't go off until after. Yep. And you know, that's another thing. It's just Potter is so good at punishing people when they pull projectiles. Cause that's the big thing is like, it's kind of like fighting Tomb Link. It's just like, there is a time when they're vulnerable when they're pulling projectiles. And if you can time yourself or to, to hit them right when that happens, you're going to hit them every time. And Potter's just really good at that, especially knowing that he's probably going high, so he's probably going to pull a grenade, just going to, like, I'm going to YOLO up, YOLO in there for an up air. Uh, another thing I'd like to point out, both uh, KOs that Underdog got in the last game were up tilts, and I feel like Underdog really struggles in general with getting tilts without up tilt. Like, he's such a good player, but man, he just really relies on those up tilts. And yeah, it costs him, especially versus Potter. I've seen Potter so many times either shield or spot dodge, and then immediately up smash him after yeah. that tilt. Yeah, I was gonna say like, um, as Snake, he should really be going for more like conditioning, right? To condition him with shield uh, by using grenades, by using C4, all that stuff, right? He shouldn't be approaching him. He should be like kicking back and making sure that uh, Potter starts to shield. And then once he starts shielding, going for the grabs, going for the follow-ups off of that stuff, and uh, kind of just using his character's camping abilities to slow down the pace of the match because he's not keeping up. He's not going to keep up with uh, Fox. Oh my god. Because Fox is like, you know, one of the fastest characters in the game. <laughs> How did that up tilt connect? <laughs> Bro, he must have extended his hurt box with that back air. Another thing, Potter does like to throw out an 8 billion back airs towards the ledge. And oh you yeah, can always guess sure. if he's short hopping away from you to at the ledge, gonna, sh gonna back air. Hey, I just wanted to point out, I didn't know this song was in the game. This is the theme song to Sonic Boom, yeah. like the anime. Yeah. Like I, like, I didn't know this was in the game. This is pretty hype, man. They also this got has to Sonic be an unlockable. Heroes. Okay, but come on. This is Sonic Boom, bro. Like, come on. This is like pure, like, late 90s, early 2000s, like, anime music. Oh, oh, you're talking about that Sonic Boom. Yeah. I thought that was Sonic Underground. The, no, no, no. So that was before. That was, sorry, that was after. This was, like, his very first one. Oh. Okay. I thought this was for Sonic Boom, the the um, the game. The like, new game? Yeah, where he has like the bandages. No, 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 no. This is so. And I think in like the like mid to late nineties, there was a, they tried to do another show called Sonic Boom. Either it was, uh -huh. I remember, <laughs> I just remember on the um, there was a Sonic Collector's Edition for the GameCube, and this was one of the like unlockable cut like scenes you could do. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I don't know how long the show was, but this show is always this song is always super hype. I'm sure there's a Sonic fan that's like, well, actually, it's a... <laughs> All right, but, good, you know, good stuff to Underdog. He, he got that sock with the Nikita. He's, Nikita's game has actually been pretty clutch. Really? I, th I was just about to comment on how he keeps missing it because he keeps trying to... He never goes In for, like, earlier circles. Sets, earlier sets it was. He, he never goes for circles. He always goes, like, up and down, up and down, you know? So it's, like, very linear. But if yeah. he would just curve around, uh, I feel like he'd catch... Potter's double jumps because Potter just is like, okay, it's not near me. I'm gonna double jump, do something. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I love this song. This is the one Sonic song I can get down to. This one is in Escape from the City. Ooh, oh, jab on. that was Let's a good. Go. That okay. was a really good reset. Upbeat. <laughs> I, I love classic. I love seeing foxes and foxes. Yeah, he's dead. And just like that, going to be a quick 3-0 and a handshake. Yeah, Underdog, it's just like, you know, you do so many good things, but Potter just doesn't respect you at all. And you go.